In this video, we're going to have a look at the RAND and RAND between NAX functions in Power BI. We're going to look at what they are, how to use them, and some of the scenarios in which you could use them. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you've used Excel before, you'll be familiar with these two DAX functions, RAND and RAND between, because they're essentially functions that are pretty simple in sort of essence. They are basically just a way for you to create or generate random sets of values in Power BI or in Excel. But if you don't know what they are, we're going to cover this today, as well as some scenarios in which you could actually use them. So first of all, let's have a look at the uh, RAND DAX function here in the documentation itself. So here it tells you that there is no parameter for this function. So you just use it as, as it is. It gives you a random number within zero and one, excluding zero, so anything above one. And if this number, these values will be evenly distributed. There are a few remarks here at the bottom, but I wanted to test it out in Power BI just to show you how they look and how they work. So here we are in my Power BI report, and I have just one table here, the schedule table, which has just a few rows here. It's just uh, meant to be just showing some tasks and some start dates. So if we create a new column here, actually, let's just go back to, let's go to the data view and create a new column here, just so that I can demonstrate what the RAND does. So RAND, if we just open and close it, hit here. So as you can see, it generates a decimal number between anything greater than zero all the way up to one. And it gives you a fairly lengthy decimal point number here. So if you wanted to convert these decimal points into numbers between, let's say, one to, to 100, all you have to do is multiply this by 100. And as you can see, it will just convert those into something that is more usable. Now, if you wanted to convert these into whole numbers instead without having any of these decimal points, all you'll need to do is wrap this whole function with an int function, which uh, forces the return value into a whole number. So as you can see here, it just gives us a, a whole number between one to 100. Now, in this case, that's pretty easy, right? So it gives you a value from one to 100. However, you might have some instances where you want to have a finer control over the range of numbers that you want the random of. So not just one to 100, maybe you want it in a smaller scale or maybe a bigger scale, in which case you have the option to use the ran between. So this is the ran between DAX function. And uh, as you've noticed, it's it's a little bit different from the RAND I mean, because this actually accepts parameters, mandatory parameters, which is the minimum and the maximum value of the random values that you want to generate. So here you get you give the bottom and the top and it will just give you a whole number between those two values that you give it. So let's give it an example here. So let's say, for example, here we wanted to generate a random number between one to 100. So let's say we're going to use ran between and let's say one here to 100. And there we go. So it gives us the random values there. So if you wanted that to be smaller, so let's say one to three, it will just give you those random values between the values that you've given it. So that pretty much shows you how to use those two simple functions. Now let's have a look at some of the more useful scenarios in which you might want to use them. And the first scenario that I have, and I have used them in the past is to create mock data. So I typically create mock data if you want to test some calculations or to create some fake data and I wanted it to be randomized and I didn't want to do it anywhere else outside of Power BI. The RAND and RAND between functions are sort of pivotal in making that happen. So let's use this uh, schedule table that I've created here as an example of how and when I've used it in the past. So it's a simple list, obviously the schedules and the different tasks. And what I wanted to add is an end date on all of these tasks. But the key thing is that I want these end dates to be randomized. I don't want to set it up myself because, you know, in my previous scenarios before you would have maybe hundreds and thousands of tasks and I don't want to, you know, set them all up manually. And the second is that I want to make sure that those end dates are either in a range that I could 
control but still randomized and it's always needs to be after the start date of where the start dates are so end dates can't be before the start date that doesn't make sense so the rand and rand between are basically what i use to create those end dates so in this case um we're gonna recreate this column that we have and we're just using for test i'm just gonna rename it into an end date and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a rand between and let's say we want a range of duration between let's say five to ten days so it will generate us a list of those numbers, so five to 10. And uh, all we'll need to do is simply add a plus. So we'll just give it, so let's say give me a random end date between five to 10 after those start dates. So what it's given me is basically given me the actual end dates here with some kind of random durations that we have set uh, using the rand between. Another way that I found rand and rand between to be super useful is when you're breaking ties, when you're using the rank X or sort of the top end calculations that you could do in Power BI. So I already covered the rank DAX functions and how you rank you do top ends in previous videos before so I'm not gonna go through too much into detail about those but I'm just gonna show you a basic way that Ruth from Kerbal.com used Rand and I think it's it's pretty genius actually because I have had several scenarios like this before and unfortunately there the ties and the ways that the rank X deals with ties is uh, sometimes it's not what I need so I found this to be extremely useful in such cases so let's have a look at this scenario. So here we are on the task table. So we have the task one, we have a few tasks here with different start dates. And uh, let's say I wanted to get the top two. So we're going to do from the filters pane top n, let's say top two from the task number here. And actually we have on the top the bottom two because the bottom starts with the one so we want to get the just the top two values here so when i add the filter here what you'll notice is that although it gives us the the bottom two it gives us three different rows of data here and that's because we have some duplicate values or duplicate task numbers that share the same rank here so we have one and two but in the the second bit here there's there's two of them that have the value of two so instead Instead of picking out just one of them, it takes the two of them and gives us the table, including all of those ties. Now, in these cases, uh, what I found is that in sort of real life scenarios, I would want to just pick out just one value here from the tied rank and just show basically two items because, you know, what I would expect is to just get two task numbers from this top end lists, uh, regardless of if they're being shared or not. So I don't really care which one is going to be shown as long as one of them gets shown but the total count for the top end still shows the right number so in these cases you can use the rand or rand between to kind of break these ties so how would you do this let's delete that filter let's create a new column here i'm going to call this task number no ties and all we're going to do is simply just do rand plus task number it's super simple, but it's super effective. And what this will do now is uh, I'm just going to add it on the table here, but you don't really need to add it. But what it will do is for any of those ties, it will just set a random value for any of those ties. And they basically will never be the same. So when you use this in your kind of rank or top end calculations, it will always pick out one value instead of taking the ties all together. So if we remove this now, and let's add it in the filters pane here uh, let's do top n again or sorry bottom n and we're gonna choose the task number there we go so as you can see it's uh, given us just two rows of data which is what we expect and breaking that tie and just picking just one of those in random and showing it in the table which is super useful if you're using the rand and rand between dax functions in this essence just be aware that these functions are deemed as volatile functions so volatile functions mean that their return values do change dynamically when the data sets that it's pulling from changes or if you're 
your data gets refreshed. So what does that mean? So that means that if you're filtering out your values here or creating some slicers, nothing really changes. However, when you go and let's say add a new value or refresh your report altogether, what you'll notice is that those functions where you generated those random functions will update their values as well. So if I hit refresh here, I'm not sure if uh, you caught that, but you will notice that the task numbers here, for example, they do change as you refresh data, which means that uh, the rankings might change as well. So if you have several ties and you have a top end, it might get swapped around if you're using it in this context. So just be aware of that functionality if you're using RAND as your sort of ranking tiebreaker. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use the RAND and RAND between DAX functions in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't. Send it to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.